reassess that the actions of Hamas and its allies will serve as an inspiration the likes of which we haven't seen since ISIS launched its so-called caliphate several years ago. In just the past few weeks, multiple foreign terrorist organizations have called for attacks against Americans and the West. Al-Qaeda issued its most specific call to attack the United States in the last five years. ISIS urged its followers to target Jewish communities in the United States and Europe. Hezbollah has publicly expressed its support for Hamas and threatened to attack U.S. interests in the Middle East. And we've seen an increase in attacks on U.S. military bases overseas carried out by militia groups backed by Iran. Joining us live now is the former Israeli ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren. Michael, um, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So just on that warning and the rise of threats against Jewish people in the United States, that's something that Australian authorities have warned about as well. The US even warning, though, there could be an attack, an eventual attack on the homeland because of the war on the US homeland. So how alarming and real is that threat with your experience? Uh, first of all, good to be with you. Uh, greetings from South Tel Aviv. Uh, just had a big must, a big uh, uh, rocket attack outside the window here. We're, we're in an area that's very much targeted by, by Hamas. So we may get interrupted, so hold your horses here. Um, it's very real. The threat is very real. Anti-Semitic incidents are literally off the chart. They're in the, they're in, they're, the increases are, are in the hundreds of percentiles. Uh, in Europe, some places, uh, in Germany, uh, in England, they're even higher than they are in the United States. Um, Jewish institutions are, are not, not in lockdown. They are heavily guarded uh, by police, by actually an organization that I advise called the, the, the Secure Community Network, which is an organization of, uh, of former FBI agents who uh, monitor and intercept threats to about 12,400 Jewish institutions across the United States. So it's a, it's a very real threat, particularly acute on American campuses where students, Jewish students feel you know, locked in. Um, and threat. Uh, as for violence against uh, Muslim institutions, I think that's also a threat now. Uh, there was a, a Muslim young man, young uh, boy, 16 year old boy, who was mur uh, murdered by just an angry American. So I guess we, I, I certainly believe that we have to be vigilant for uh, violence in that direction as well. You served as ambassador to the US from 2009 to 2013. There were two conflicts between Israel and Gaza in that time. It, was, it, was it similar then or is it worse now? Oh, it's much worse now. I actually participated in one of those operations. I wasn't an ambassador yet in 2009 when I was a reserve officer. And those, that was one of, those were two of five rounds of fighting we had with, with Hamas. And they basically followed the same pattern. Uh, Hamas, for whatever internal political reasons, felt it necessary to shoot rockets at us. They fired several thousand rockets at us. We responded, for the most part, uh, from the air. Only in 2014, there was a, a brief and not very deeply penetrated ground operation. Um, and then there was mediation by Egypt and other uh, third, yeah. third parties, and we reached an agreement and it went back to normal. Uh, Israel proceeded under a false premise. I stress this. I'm not a representative of the government, so I can tell you this, that uh, we could incentivize Hamas uh, through Qatari cash, a lot of cash, uh, letting 20,000 Gaza workers into Israel. We were wrong. Hamas doesn't care about the cash, doesn't care about the workers, doesn't care about the people of Gaza. It cares about one thing, and that's killing us. All right. Michael, uh, there was a bombing today at a refugee camp in northern Gaza. A Hamas commander was taken out but dozens of civilians were also reportedly killed in that strike. Is this consistent with international law on protecting civilians? It is because uh, we've asked the civilians, urged them to move out of that area. Uh, they have not. Many of them are prevented from moving out of there by Hamas, often at gunpoint, because uh, Hamas wants to use them as human shields, and you see how it works. Hamas wants to get us branded as war crimes, wants international pressure on us to mount and so that we will accept the ceasefire, which means basically the Hamas wins, it gets away with mass murder, and, and we have no deterrence power at all. We won't be able to resume our normal life here. So that's what Hamas wants. We can't let them have that. Mm. Now, we don't know all the details about this bombing. We know from what happened with that hospital several weeks ago, we gotta be very careful with the sources. We don't know there was an entire uh, Hamas headquarters under that building. Uh, we'll find out. Having said that, 
We're always sorry to see uh, civilians hurt. It's not the goal here. The goal is to get at Hamas. And if civilians are hurt, serving as hum human shields for Hamas, what can I say? That is Hamas' sure. responsibility. Yeah, no, no, I get I get that. It's uh, well documented that uh, Hamas um, operates within civilians, but that civilian death toll is climbing and climbing, including children now. More than 3,500 children have been killed so far in Gaza. So the longer this continues, does Israel run the risk, and Israel does have a lot of support in the international community, but does it risk run the risk of isolating itself from the international community as the civilian death toll rises? It does. And I want to stress again, I'm not a spoke for the government and I worry about this. I've seen it happen even in those very small operations that we had. You know, we started off with a lot of goodwill because we had rockets going at us uh, and then we lost it as we continue to, to bomb Hamas. Hamas is not above ground, you have to stress. It's, it's, it's located in hundreds of miles of tunnels and bunkers as much as 300 feet under Gaza. So you have to get to the Hamas yeah. while they shoot the rockets. The rockets are, are come out of the ground. You can see them coming down. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult. I'm aware of this, uh, of this factor. At the end of the day, we have no choice. We have to destroy Hamas or we will not, this country simply won't be inhabitable.